uh, nine years back. On 26th of July 2005, we had close to a meter of rainfall in 24 hours. 994 millimeter of rainfall uh, in 24 hours, which is one of the highest ever recorded in India. We had 500 people who died in Mumbai alone. If we include surrounding districts, then we about 5,000 people died. The economic loss was pegged at about 12,000 rupees, 12,000 crore rupees. And when IMD was asked to make its annual report and say what caused Mumbai 2005, it said it was caused, quote unquote, due to mesoscale convection around Mumbai. Now, I'm not an atmospheric scientist, uh, but it looks like that the cause given by IMD was that there was a sudden huge cloud formation which just poured over a certain part of Mumbai. Okay. There, were, there was no uttering of the word climate change anywhere from the scientific community of this country, including IMD. And if you look at this map and look at the red spot, which is Mumbai, it looks like as if an atom bomb has fallen to that place. That's what happened on the day, 26 July 2006, at 10 o'clock in Mumbai. Uh, the entire lake town, part of the lake town and the surrounding settlements were devastated by a cloud burst. That's what IMD called on what happened on 6th of August 2010. Anywhere between 150 to 250 millimeter of rain fell in 30 minutes. And because there is no, there are not many uh, a weather station there, weather monitoring stations, these are estimates. Officially, more than 250 people have died, died on that day. There are no estimates of economic loss. When IMD was asked to give reason again, it said that it was because of interaction between monsoon and mid-latitude westerly system. That was the reason IMD gave. But it went on to say that these type of phenomena are not common in Ladakh because Ladakh is a cold desert and the average rainfall in that month is only about 15 millimeter. So it called this event unusual and freak, but didn't even mention the word climate change. Uttarakhand, fresh memory, 2013, uh, more than 5,000 people died officially, 10,000 crore rupees loss. The rainfall was anywhere between 400% to 800% more than normal. and. IMD termed it as a unique event and said that it is again a, it happened because of interaction between the westerlies and the monsoon system over Uttarakhand and actually officially rejected any linkage with climate change when it was asked. And now we have JNK in 2014, which is again termed as unseasonal and extreme rainfall, worst flood since independence. We don't know the extent of devastation, but we will know soon, but it's, it's going to be huge. In many places, again, it rained more than 200 millimeter in 24 hours, which is 400% more than the monthly average. Again, the same trend. Sudden extreme rainfall that happened in GMK as well. And the reason given by IMD was that it is again due to interaction between monsoon current and two intense western disturbances. Now, there are certain common themes that are emerging from the past four events that you see. Mumbai, Uttarakhand, JNK, and Leh. First, sudden intense rainfall in a very, very short period of time. That is point number one. And second, that it is an increasing interaction between western disturbances and monsoons. These are the two common themes that emerges if you analyze all four. And the third common theme is every time people talk about climate change, it is outrightly rejected. This is the picture of JNK on 9th of this month, and you can see the buildup of cloud, intense cloud over Kashmir. And this is what is, uh, sorry, that, that was on 4th of September, and this is on 9th of September. That tells you the intensity of cloud buildup uh, over Kashmir Valley. Now, the question we have is, in all these events, four that we have analyzed, IMD has used terms like unique, unprecedented, unusual. These are the terms that has been used to define these events. But there has not been any explanation given why these events are happening so frequently. And our Ministry of Environment and Forest, which looks after climate change, has actually no opinion on these issues. 
we have been, has it uttered a word? Why these extreme rainfall events are happening? Is there something to do with climate change, or is there uh, nothing to do with climate change? So there is a complete silence on the issue of climate change and these extreme weather events uh, that has that has devastated parts of this country in the last nine years. But the world is not waiting for what IMD has to say or the scientific community of India has to say. We we we. The world community is coming out with number of reports. If you look at the reports that have come out in last seven years, IPCC fourth assessment report came out in 2007 and very clearly said that extreme rainfall events are going to increase over Indian subcontinent. That is Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change fourth assessment report 2004. IPCC came out with a special report on extreme events and disaster in 2011 and which essentially said that climate change is changing the frequency, intensity, spatial extent, and duration of extreme weather events. And countries like India's are highly vulnerable to such changes. IPCC fifth assessment report came out in 2012, which says, in general, India will get more rains, but in less rainy days. Intensity of rainfall will increase. And many Indian scientists have also said the same. But before I go to this, this is a data on how extreme weather event is increasing across the world. Every decade, this is the global average number of extreme weather events per decade from 1900 to 2010. It was only two and a half extreme weather events between 1900 to, 1990, uh, to 1909. Now it is 350 events every year. Now coming back to India, we have a, uh, you know, a seminal study done in 2006 on extreme rainfall events in India, which, which was done by uh, Indian Institute of Tropical Meteorology and done by uh, uh, D.N. Goswami there, which shows that if you look at past 50 years, from 1950 to 2000, heavy rainfall events and very heavy rainfall events have increased in India. Heavy rainfall events are when it rains more than 100 millimeter a day, and very heavy events when it rains more than 150 millimeters a day. As I said, in Jammu and Kashmir, it rained 200 millimeter rain. Moderate events have decreased. At the top, Jammu and Kashmir, you find that over a period of next 50 years, the annual rainfall in Jammu and Kashmir area is going to increase by anywhere between 250 to 500 millimeter every year. This is a climate model. Similar thing you can see in Mumbai and Western Ghats, where the increase could be anywhere between 5, 250 to more than 500. The same you can see in Uttarakhand. If you superimpose the four case study, you will find that the common theme is that all these four areas will see more than 250 millimeter of increase in annual rainfall. Now look at JNK floods. The state doesn't have a flood forecasting system. Okay, it is one, one of the very few states in India which doesn't have a flood forecasting system. It doesn't have many flood monitoring stations. Though, Kashmir Valley is known to be flood prone. The state doesn't have a separate disaster management department. It's, it set up something, uh, some system in 2012. It is very, very rudimentary. IMD claims that it had issued warning. <coughs> but how specific and actionable was the warning, we never know. We don't know. The same thing happened in Uttarakhand, if you all remember. IMD said that <coughs> that the heavy rainfall will happen in that area. But how specific and actionable are the warnings uh, is an issue. A general warning is not actionable. Similarly, we need to know how specific and actionable was the warning. And most importantly in JNK, bad development is, is a big issue. Encroachment of floodplains and disruption of lakes, ponds, and wetlands uh, is a chronic problem there. And this is a study that was done by JNK State Remote Sensing Center, which shows what Kashmir was in 1911 and what Kashmir is in 2004. More than 55% of lakes, ponds, and wetlands have been enclosed to build roads and houses. Basically, if Kashmir Valley, it rains, even if it rains 100 millimeter, you are going to have much more floods uh, because of such unplanned and bad development. We think that our biggest problem is that we are denying that, that India is being affected by climate change. There is a general sense of policy denial that uh, generally the belief is that this is a natural cycle of floods and droughts. 
uh, that is affecting us. That, you know, the climate change will happen, it will happen in future, it's not happening right now. That's the general sense uh, uh, in the country. But I think that is hurting us more. I think the first thing we have to do is that we have to accept that climate change is, accept, is impacting us. There is huge body of knowledge now which tell us that it is hurting India and it is going to hurt us more in the future. And if we accept it, then we have to start internalizing climate change in adaptation in all our plans and policy. From the way we are going to build our cities to the way we are going to construct dams to the way we are going to do rainwater harvesting to the way we are going to supply water and energy, uh, climate change impacts will have to be internalized. Right now, climate change is seen separately than development. We will have to improve our forecasting and warning system. The current systems are just not sufficient to deal with the kind of impacts uh, we are facing. We will have to build disaster management capabilities at the local and state level. We keep focusing at the national level, but the fact is the resilience will be built at the local and state level. Center can only support. Resilience will be built at the local level. And lastly, we will have to invest more in research to understand how climate change is going to impact us more, and where, in which area, in which economic aspects. Now, these are the things we think is important to start discussing. As Sunita said, that uh, relief, rehabilitation uh, is going to be very important right now for Kashmir, Jammu and Kashmir. That should take place. But we should not forget what we have to do in the next 10 to 20 years. If we don't do these things, things like Kashmir will happen every year. That's, that's what the future looks like. Thank you.